Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Miriam and today you're in for a new video with five different things that you probably didn't know about Jane Arthur. If you're new to this channel, in here we aim to discover and discuss a lot more about classic films. As always, I am more than happy to share with you my findings, my researches, and my opinions too on a topic that I absolutely adore. So sit back and relax, we're going to talk about one of my favorite actresses, Jean Arthur. So if you don't know who Jean Arthur is, which I really hope you do, otherwise get out of this video. No, kidding. <laughs> this wonderful actress was particularly famous during the 30s and the 50s, specifically in screwball comedies. That was the genre that she was famous for, even though she made other films uh, particularly westerns too, but she is mostly famous, I would say, for the screwball comedies. She worked with Frank Capra, who considered her her favorite actress, and she gave some of the screwball comedies some of the greatest performances, I would say, along with Carol Lombard or Claudette Colbert, out of my favorites too. But she gave again some of the greatest performances with films such as The More the Merrier or Easy Living and with Frank Capra she made three beautiful films such as Mr. Deeds Goes to Washington, You Can't Take It With You and my personal favorite Mr. Smith Goes to Washington and her last movie role was none other than Marion Starrett in the film Shane and I've talked enough about Shane so don't worry I won't cover Shane today you're safe. That's what we know about her in terms of her film career, but in terms of her personal history, we know, at least I didn't know much about her. And I found a book researching online that is called Jean Arthur, the Actress Nobody Knew, which is very fitting, I would say, and it covers precisely the fact that um, she was a very private person and there's never been much information about her life. She used to not give too many interviews and stay away from photographers and avoid participating in any kind of publicity stunt. So again, it's difficult to have much information about her. And in that book, there are quite a few interesting facts that I was very happy to learn about and that I immediately wanted to share in a video. One of the first things that we have to say outside the five different things that we'll discuss in a minute is that her real name was Gladys Green. She was born in Plattsburgh, New York, supposedly, because that is something, again, that's a bit um, difficult to trace, even the year that she was born. So there's some discrepancy between information that you can find online. And even in the book, the author points out that she, for some reason, might have tried to conceal some facts about her age, about the, the year she was born and where she was born, probably because those were the days where you have to be more glamorous but she was born again Gladys Green and again supposedly she changed her name into Jean Arthur uh, picking out Arthur for King Arthur and Jean for her favorite heroine of all time who was Joan of Arc and again supposedly that was the idea or that is how she picked out her stage name but there's one thing that we can be sure of is that she really portrayed the smart and funny and witty working girl of her time. She's a testimony of great women on screen. So she was someone that I wanted to learn more about and that I wanted to make a specific video of in order to encourage more viewers to watch more of her films. So without further ado, let's jump into the five different things that you probably don't know about Jean Arthur. The first thing that you probably don't know about Miss Arthur is that she was a huge advocate for animals, that she was a lover of all creatures, and she will go into all sorts of lengths when she felt the need to help an animal. And as I learned from the book, in several occasions when she was shooting films, she would go to assist animals that she thought 
they were in need and at one point while filming Shane she just stopped the shooting and insisted on having the chickens substituted for dummies because she noticed that the chickens eyes were started to get red that was because they were carried upside down as the farmers would do and she refused to do another scene until dummy chickens were substituted in this case and also while filming another one of her lesser known westerns called Arizona with William Holden she hired a veterinarian at her expense to cure pigs that were on the film of a skin disease that she noticed so it was something that she did out of her own again expenses because she wanted to help the animals and that's very much in line with something that I also read about Errol Flynn that I didn't get to share my video with five different things that you don't know about Errol Flynn but it was that he was appalled to by the treatment that director Michael Curtis was making of the horses in the film of the charge of the light brigade and I, I'm pretty much sure that other films but he was very much concerned that the way they were treated and they were dying to at the expense of action sequences and he confronted director Michael Curtis for that and that was one of the causes of their constant confrontation but in this case Jean Arthur was very adamant and she would go again to any length that she thought was right in terms of defending and protecting animals which leads me to the second thing that you probably didn't know about her and that thing is that she was arrested and she was in jail in 1973 for protecting a dog and the story goes as it again it all comes from the book on her life that I read recently and that I will leave a link down below if you want to check up too because you can rent it from a free library called archive.org and you can absolutely read it I I really enjoyed it a lot learning so much about her but coming back to that second thing that you probably didn't know about is what happens according to the book is that in 1972 she started teaching at the University of North Carolina the School of Arts and she moved to Winston-Salem North Carolina and she was the neighbor of a young couple a young working couple who had a dog and on March 31st 1973 Jean was arrested when trying to help the neighbor's dog what happened was that the young couple would work all day and will leave the dog chained in their property and Jean could hear the dog bark and moan and cry all day and she would bring food to the dog initially and she then suggested or she offered to build a fence around their backyard so that the animal wouldn't have to be chained and still could run and wouldn't leave the property but they refused and she went on to threaten them of calling the Humane Society for mistreating the animal and they in turn threatened her to call the police if she trespassed again their property and that's exactly what she did she went on to again and brought food to the animal and the police went on to her house and arrested her which seems something out of a movie seems something out of you can't take it with you and i can really picture her with lionel barrymore and he's and monica and making fun of the whole situation i believe that in reality i bet it wasn't as funny or as easy as in the movie but uh, that's what happened she eventually was bailed out and she was in the end sentenced with two misdemeanor charges and initially the matters were kept quiet but eventually the news leaked and other actors reached out to her like Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton and there was a lot of backlash for the town who had convicted and arrested Jean Arthur all right the third fact that you probably don't know about Jean Arthur is that she was in the final list to play the coveted part of Scarlett O'Hara I had absolutely no idea about this fact prior to reading the book and it caught me very much by surprise I must say because even though I really love Jean Arthur I can't picture her 
uh, Scarlett O'Hara, probably because Vivian Lee is so iconic in that role. So what I've learned, what I learned from the book is that David O. Selznick, who was the producer of Gone with the Wind, was very smitten with Jean. And it appears that for several years they had some sort of romantical uh, relationship, even though he ended up getting engaged with Irene Mayer, who was the daughter of Louis B. Mayer, the head of the studio Metro Goldwyn Mayer. David O. Selznick had acquired the rights to the novel Gone with the Wind in 1936, and the research for the I leading part of Scarlett O'Hara was the biggest uh, movie casting of all time for a part. Uh, but practically every actress wanted to play Scarlett or was tested genius. to play Scarlett. So what happened is that as years went by, there was more and more pressure for David O. Selznick to find the actress. In 1938, he signed Clark Gable to play Red Butler. From that moment on, the pressure was on. He had thought about the idea of casting a newcomer before but for some reason he still was testing actresses in Hollywood and there was a point where there was a final list of five actresses and that included Paulette Goddard which was the actress that I thought was closer to playing the part and there was also I think Loretta Young from what I learned from the book, Catherine Hepburn, Jean Arthur, I have to read. And an amateur actress called Doris Jordan, which I know nothing about. And as weeks went by, that list seemed to change and the final four actresses that were considered for the part of Scarlett O'Hara were, again, Paulette Goddard, this time Constance Bennett, Jean Arthur, and then Vivian Lee because she had arrived in Hollywood with Laurence Olivier who was starting to make movies then. She was a very um, new actress, had done a few films back in England which she was from and she caught the eye of Oselsnake and she was in the final round along again with Paulette Goddard, Constance Bennett and Jean Arthur for the part of Scarlett. They all got screen tests up to the final decision and as you, as we all know, it was Vivian who finally got the part. Although I love again Jean Arthur, it was a very good decision. So there you go, Gone with the Wind. This also leads me to the fourth interesting fact that you probably don't know about Jean Arthur and it's also about a part that she ended up not playing again but it was written for her and that is the part of Billy Dawn in Born Yesterday and as you would know from previous videos Born Yesterday is one of the greatest films for me so to learn that too was very interesting so what happened in this case was that Garson Kanan who was a playwright, a screenwriter and director of films like My Favorite Wife or Bachelor Mother had written Born Yesterday specifically for Jean Arthur much like he had done with The More the Merrier which was also written by Garson Kanan and Born Yesterday started first as a Broadway production which was very successful initially the theater producer Max Gordon didn't want or wasn't too sure about casting Jean Arthur as Billy Dawn and that's because she had developed some sort of a reputation of being a little um, difficult on set and that's because she would sometimes question decisions or request also to change dialogues and things like that from what I've read but Garson insisted because she had been in the film The More the Merrier a few years before, directed by George Stevens and everyone was very pleased during that film production so he insisted that everything had gone great so they started rehearsing for the play and they cast Gary Merrill 
as Paul Verrill, a role that was later played by William Holden in the film. And they also cast Paul Douglas as the part of Harry Brock, who was inspired by Harry Kahn, the head of Columbia Studios, who was notoriously, you know the word. And that part would go on to Broderick Crawford in the film. So yes, they started rehearsing with Jean as Billy Dawn, and they went on to tour briefly to a few towns and then they arrived to Boston and that's when the whole thing collapsed and she started to get more and more exhausted to the point where she had to leave the production and they had to find a new Billy Dawn which was then Judy Holiday, as we all know and was also then a newcomer she was a very unknown actress that came from nightclubs but again she was marvelous and she went on to win an oscar for her part in the film version of born yesterday in a year that included gloria swanson for sunset boulevard and Betty davis for all about eve and Anne baxter also for all about eve so it's amazing that judy holiday won that year but she did and i'm really happy to be honest very perhaps unpopular opinion but i love billy I love Judy Holiday, and I'm so happy that she got recognition for the part, which sadly, Jean Arthur never went on to win any Oscars. She, I, I believe she was only nominated once, but she never got not even an honorary Oscar that I'm aware of. But yes, she was the inspiration for the part of Billy Dawn in Born Yesterday, and that is amazing. All right, and we made it again to the last thing that you probably don't know about Miss Arthur. That is that she was briefly the teacher of none other than Meryl Streep. And how she came up to be the teacher of Meryl Streep, you may ask. And that I will tell you in a minute, my friends. She started teaching in the school drama department of Vassar College. And that institution is referenced in many films and when i think of vassar i immediately think of the movie some like it hot and jack lemon and tony curtis fighting over sugar and telling oh there's a very nice anecdote about a girl from bazaar who was found dead with a silk stocking or something like that it's so funny every time i hear vassar that's what i think of uh but yes coming back to the subject jean arthur was for a few years a teacher of the drama school school drama department at Vassar and Meryl Streep happened to be one of the students at that time. It was in the 70s and in the beginning none of the students knew who Jean Arthur was other than their parents telling them that she had been a famous actress in the past and they really didn't know what she had done until there was a screening at the campus of Mr. Smith Goes to Washington and then they realized that she had been a great actress and Meryl Streep was one of the finest students, as you will probably think, and there was a production of a play called Miss Julie, and she played the lead character, and Jean Arthur was very much impressed, and according to the book, she went on to say about Streep that the way she performed, it was just like watching a movie star. So yes, Jean Arthur was briefly the teacher of Meryl Streep, and in a way, she discovered her you might say. Very far-fetched fact that she was indeed the teacher of Meryl Streep, which is pretty amazing too. Pretty awesome the way all things are connected. So those were the five different things that you probably didn't know about Jean Arthur. I hope as always that you enjoyed this video, that you learned something that you didn't know before, that you're eager to watch some of Jean Arthur's films and for that I have a recommendation of several films that I would like to leave you to with this video and these are films that you can find online that they're available in YouTube which I was very happy to discover and these are films that I really love about Jean Arthur and uh, the films are The More the Merrier, which is a comedy with Joel McRae and Charles Coburn that I've covered briefly in the video and that I really, really love. And I, I encourage you to watch if you haven't already. Another one that is available on YouTube is Adventure in Manhattan, also with Joel McRae, because I think they were great together. And this is also a comedy 
different than the more the merrier, very different, but also enjoyable uh, and funny and their chemistry is really great. And another delightful screwball comedy that you can watch for free on YouTube is Easy Living with Ray Milan and Edward Arnold that I really recommend. It has very funny scenes and those are three movies that you can watch for free of Gene Arthur. Other films that I love about Gene Arthur that I haven't found for free but it would be very good if you could find them and watch them are You Can't Take It With You which is a very nice film, very nice comedy. That Lee who also loves talking about classic films, also talked about and recommended in her last video. And I will leave a link down below so you, that you can watch the things that she watches every month, which always includes very good recommendations. And the other film that I really, really love with Jane Arthur is Mr. Smith Goes to Washington and with James Stewart. And it would be great again if you could find it and watch it. And the cast is pretty impressive, especially character actors like Thomas Mitchell, Harry Carey, uh, Edward Arnold, Claude Rains. And yes, that was it for the video. Again, I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. I'll keep making more videos these days just to tell you all to stay safe and keep watching classic films and let's keep sharing more about what we love. Thank you so much for watching, take care, and I see you all in my next video. Bye! This is a favorite alert. Hello! <sighs> for the part of Scarlett, Johan Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett Johansson. And that I and Joseph... Joes. This wonderful can come... I away, I away, <laughs> and that's the tea.